Okie dokie. Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Jar Kirk. What's up? Looking at a pitch meeting from Pitch Meeting Today called Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban Pitch Meeting. Oh, my favorite. I think this is my favorite Harry Potter movie. It, it's, it's my favorite Harry Potter book as well. Uh, I don't know if I can agree with that for me, but it's definitely one of my favorite Harry Potter movies. It shifted the tone in a new direction away from that Home Alone vibe. It shifted in a more mature direction and it expanded the size of Hogwarts and all that stuff. And so this was like, for me, it was one of the coolest Harry Potter movies. Thank you, Pitch Meeting, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciate it. Y'all, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. While you're subscribing and upvoting, subscribe to Pitch Meeting. There's a link in the description below. You can click on that link, give the original upvote, subscribe to them from there. This is their new channel so uh they're currently at 452,000 subscribers which is all things considered pretty cool that they yeah. managed to get there so quick but they should be at a million already so help them out here we go so you have a new harry potter for me yes sir i do so harry potter's at the dursleys right the abusive family that everybody knowingly sends him back to every summer that's yep. the one so he's in bed doing that lumo spell over and over again isn't him doing magic outside of hogwarts like forbidden yeah i yeah. mean technically not a super important detail though <laughs> okay so then this terrible aunt comes over and she's just the worst i mean she's super mean and he accidentally turns her into a big floaty balloon oh Ooh. very satisfying <laughs> yeah but now harry he's got to go on the run because he did magic outside of school. You can't do that. But that you just started the movie with him doing some. Oh, I did do that, didn't I? Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie, you silly goose. You goose that's silly. So anyway, <laughs> then he takes this wacky convenience bus that wizards have and heads to the leaky cauldron. And what happens there? Well, the minister of magic is like, oh yeah, don't worry about the magic stuff. That's fine. Okay. So Harry gets some of his school books, one of which is a book of monsters that's an actual monster. Like it tries to bite you and it tears apart its own pages <laughs> who would even publish that <laughs> I, mean, sir, I feel like it's clear at this point that wizards have like zero consumer protection laws that's a good point so then <laughs> harry goes back to hogwarts which this year has completely changed geographically what so then dumbledore gives his annual opening speech you know about all the different ways the kids might die this year oh this guy freaking hates when kids are safe he really uh. does so what does voldemort have in store this year <laughs> nothing oh yeah playing it laid back giving everyone a year off this year a very considerate dark wizard you see the <laughs> threat this year is this dangerous escaped convict, Sirius Black. Oh. Yeah, and apparently he wants to kill Harry Potter, and he's the one who ratted out his parents to Voldemort. Sounds like it's pretty serious. He's okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what? The, the pun. It sounds like it's pretty oh, serious. Oh, it's pretty serious. Yeah. Oh. The whole thing with Voldemort always kind of threw me in the Harry Potter series. And I know they have this built-in excuse of he's spending a lot of time, like, recouping his power. It's always been odd to me that you didn't have him more present than he was in those first four books. It was convenient. It was giving a lot of time yeah. to other stuff. Because imagine if Darth Vader and the Empire didn't show up until, like, Return of the Jedi. That would be odd. That would be odd. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it's a, it's a different kind of story. A little smatter of Voldemort through the first four just to kind of build up the suspense and be like oh no Vo no he who must not be named and you're all like god yeah normally that's like why? the first third of a story not like the first four stories yeah. you know what I mean Voldemort sounds like it's pretty serious he's decent looking sure that's not never mind okay so I guess they give Harry some extra security huh they don't no oh they don't no instead they have a bunch of these horrible creatures called Dementors all over the place uh, and they'll yeah. suck out your soul if you get too close so they're very deadly so to stop a student from maybe being killed they bring in a bunch of things that might kill students that's what they're going with interesting strategy and so throughout the year Harry's gonna get to know the new defense against the dark arts teacher this guy Professor Lupin. And what's uh, his deal? Well, he shows them this creature called the Boggart that takes the form of whatever you're the most afraid of. Oh. Yeah, so when he looks at it, he sees a full moon because he's secretly a werewolf. The guy with the name that basically means wolf in Latin is a yes. werewolf. A real <laughs> wacky coinkadink of a last name on that one, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So the trick to defeating a boggart is to imagine your fear doing something really funny. Like this one girl's afraid of a giant snake, so she thinks of a giant unblinking clown. Oh my god, how is that better? Yeah, I don't know about that one, to be honest. Jeez. What would be your thing? Like, what would be your worst fear if you were in the, the school of magic? Hogwarts. Everyone that I love dying. No, but like, that it has to be something that scares you. Like Heights. They can't show you heights. Like, it has to be a thing that manifests in front of you. If Lupin can get a moon, I can get a giant cliff and looking down at, at the edge of it and barfing. I guess that's fair. <laughs> they showed you the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh my uh, god. <laughs> ah, it's so scary. Not the moon. What's yours? BBC. I'm just joking. <laughs> what? what? Is no, like a giant spider. 
Sure. Or a cockroach. You know what BBC stands for? British Broadcasting Company. Big, beautiful... See you next Tuesdays. Never mind, Acharo. But like that was the first place my brain went anyway. It doesn't have to be a black person. It could be any ethnicity. It's just like a big penis showing up in front of you. Ah, oh God, put it away. You're more scared of a penis than a spider? Fuck yeah. Why are you always yelling at me when there's a spider in your apartment going, Achara, get rid of it? If random little penises showed up in my apartment, <laughs> I'd ask you to step on those too. Achara, get rid of the penises! <laughs> Just like little things worming around. <laughs> That'd be so frightening. Ew. Wouldn't that be so frightening? Yeah, try being a girl in this day and age. Now yeah, you took it too far. <laughs> it's so like vulnerable and revealing as well to do something like that. Let's then just the, show and, your worst fear to yeah, everybody. Then the entire <laughs> class knows what you're afraid of. And everyone's going to be like, you're afraid of dicks. Yeah, isn't everybody? <laughs> I thought that was everyone's fear. Just like an undesired, unwelcomed schlong. Actually, the Weasley twins give Harry this little map called the Marauder's Map. And what does that do? This is freaking map of Hogwarts that shows you where everybody is. Okay. And then one day Harry sees this name on the map, Peter Pettigrew, but Lupin's like, that's impossible. That guy's dead. Oh, very mysterious. Yeah, mm. very mysterious. And later a dog drags Ron under a tree. Is that related to the plot or is that just the thing that happens to Ron? Both, technically. So now Harry and Hermione have to save him, but that tree is the Whomping Willow. Okay, now is that that? Willow that whomps? That's the one, yep. yeah. I thought so. So the whomping willow freaking picks up Hermione, <laughs> sends her spinning around in the air like crazy. Uh oh. And then as she's whizzing on by, she picks up Harry with one arm and drags him along too. I feel like that would snap her arm. Yeah, no, she's got like super strength for this one scene, don't worry about it. Oh, okay, I won't. And then she launches <laughs> him into this hole that. under the tree thanks to the superhuman coordination she also has in this scene. Oh, tree holes are tight. Gross, sir. So then they end up <laughs> in this house and serious Black is there. Oh no. And then Lupin pops out too and turns out they're buddies. Oh. And they're gonna talk super vaguely for a while to make it seem like they're evil and like they're gonna kill Harry, but they're not. Oh, characters love speaking vaguely right before big twists. They sure do, <laughs> sir. So then it turns out that Ron's rat, who was always on his lap, was a full grown man named Peter Pettigrew, yeah. aka Wormtail, this whole time. Uh, that has just the most unsettling implications. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fred and George never wondered why on the Marauders map there was a guy named Peter in bed with their brother every night? None of their business. So what was Wormtail's strategy? Uh. Live with the Weasleys for 12 years in the hopes that the kids would become friends with important wizards? Sure seems that way. And what was Sirius's strategy? Just break into a heavily guarded school and kill the one guy who could clear his name? Sure seems that way. Well, okay then. So what <laughs> happens with Wormtail? Well, he ends up escaping because Lupin forgot to take his full moon potion on a full moon, so he turns into a werewolf. The werewolf whose biggest fear is full moons forgot about the full moon? He does. And then also some Dementors start attacking, so Harry and Sirius are both, like, about to die. Oh man, it's gonna be tough to get out of that situation. Actually, nope. it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they use Hermione's time machine to go help themselves. What? Hermione has a time machine? I almost forgot about that. It makes me so mad. That's why this book pissed me off. I've and, heard you talking about this a lot, I, yeah. The way they executed it in the movie, because I was ready for it from the book, when they, ex when they showed us that stuff in the movie, I was like, okay. I like how they did it in the movie. You know, it's visual, so yeah. it was easy to follow. And I'm like, okay, all right, that's fine. It's just this weird thing to just, it's almost like Pandora's box. Like you bring this thing into the story. It's like, whoa, I feel like that needs to be the whole, there's a reason why, you know, the DeLorean was a focal point of Back to the Future. They didn't just show up with this thing and then, okay, well that's done. We're right. gonna continue on with this normal story in the present now. It's like, no, now that's the point of the story. Like you can't just ignore that. For uh, uh, JK Rowling to introduce this, for all intents and purposes, like a, a deuce ex machina to the story. I mean, I know she was hinting at it because like, I remember distinctly in the book, Hermione's like, I'm so tired. Why are you so tired? I'm just yeah. tired. She's been studying harder than everybody else, like rewinding her clock. I'm like, okay. And you're just gonna take that out. It's just not in the stories anymore. You just get to do that. And no one said, no one bats an eye at the fact that this time machine is gone. If I'm Harry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna sneak into wherever and get as many of those as I can and rewind the clock back to my parents. 
fuck all of you. I'm seeing my parents. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think there's like a limitation of yeah, how far how back far you, you can go. You know? yeah. yeah. She was interested with this time turner device so she could double up on her classes and learn more. Why would they trust her? She's broken multiple rules multiple times over the past couple of movies. Yeah, but see, she's book smart, so they give her the ability to, you know, mess with time itself. <laughs> well, well, okay, well, that's going to be a super helpful device moving forward. No, 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 no. But, no, 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 <laughs> never again. Okay, but no. Nope. All right. And so all that works out well, but seriously, gets captured because now that Wormtail's gone there's nobody to prove his innocence. Can they maybe use a truth potion to prove what happened or do that thing where they pull memories out of people's heads? Oh, well here's the thing about that. Shut up about that. <laughs> oh, that's super mean. So they go break Sirius out of the little cell he's being kept in and set him free. Aren't there any guards or anything? No, see they capture one of the most wanted criminals in the wizarding world and leave him in a little unguarded cell. Oh, well that's great. Yeah, it worked out fantastic. So how does the movie end? Well Harry gets a very nice new broom and then we freeze frame on him enjoying it. What? Yeah, yeah, just an aggressive <laughs> freeze frame on him enjoying it. That's a choice. It's I remember that too. I remember that moment, but like, all right. That's a weird way to go out of this movie, but I'll allow it. You know? <laughs> it's fine. You know, he's just had a really rough time. He's an orphan, no one loves him, and then he finds out that like his godfather is super just, cool. But think about the way all these superhero movies end where it's like Batman flying into the camera and then black screen. Yeah. Spider-Man flying into the camera, black screen. That's pretty much what they should have done here. Harry Potter flying into the camera, black screen. That's yeah. a great way to freeze on this like aggressive expression from his face. It's, it's a lot. Did no one think like, yeah, this is kind of fucking weird. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sure is, sir. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great movie. Thank you. One more thing, though. Unfortunately, we're going to have to find somebody new to play Dumbledore since Richard Harris passed away. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you have anyone in mind? Well, I don't know, but it's got to be someone who could bring his mysterious nature and great wisdom to the screen, you know? That's a good point, yeah. And that'll have to do until one day we cash in and give people the young, hot Dumbledore they really want. Why would anyone want to see that? I don't see that happening. We all want a young, hot Dumbledore. Uh, speak for yourself. No? I thought he was born old. <laughs> it just came out like that. The beard and everything. They were, they were getting that placenta out for weeks. Ew. What is ew about something natural and female? That's just, like, it's it's the weeks thing that kind of grossed me out. It's like, just take it out in one go. <laughs> With like a magic comb. Take placenta gone. No, it comes out. It doesn't take weeks, jeez. If he has, if he was born with a beard, fine. Just wrapped in white, like a baby born with this big ass beard. Like, what happened? I thought he was born that way. He was no. Born old. He's got older. Um. Anyway, this was fun. You this guys. Love fun. I enjoyed Ryan George's take on it. I mean, he was certainly pointing out some things that I, I hadn't thought about, but stuff that I definitely had thought about. The time machine thing was the biggest offense. Yeah. Just like the way he was like, no, 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 no. I'm like exactly. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's a problem. And also, also the stuff that he brought up as well. Like, oh yeah, couldn't we just do a truth serum or like pull a memory out? It's yeah. like, no. Exactly. Though those do not stand up in a magical court of law. Yep. Because memories are fallible, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, why not a truth serum? Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon, plays all notifications, and vote this up. I'm Jabby Kuwait. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.